we've got Pat in the hot seat, and he mm. likes it there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just can't wait. <laughs> All right, Nancy says, 20 years ago, I heard a voice that said loud and clear, you will die of terminal cancer. Since then, I've had numerous biopsies all come back clear. How do I know if that was God? God doesn't pronounce sentences of death. That was the devil, and don't believe it, don't listen to it, and obviously it was false. So uh, these uh, ominous warnings of gloom and doom almost invariably come from the enemy. God is a God of joy and peace and love and hope, and uh, uh, this is not of God. All right. Amen. Linda says, could this Iranian nuclear deal be the covenant spoken of in Daniel 927, and he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week? Also, I have read the whole Bible and have always heard that you would be forced to take the mark of the beast or be beheaded, or is it just that the false prophet causes all great and small, rich and poor to receive the mark as in Revelation 13, 16. If we're here during the tribulation and we can't buy or sell without the mark, how will we eat or pay bills? We won't even be able to have a job because how would we be paid? Wow. Um, Lots I, of questions. I think you worried too much about these <laughs> things. You know, the Bible says, occupy till I come. Uh, the thing we're supposed to do is to get the gospel out, you know, that's, that's what he said, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then he said, you know, I want you to go into all the nations, I mean, into all the world, teach all nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and I'm with you always. All this business about the Antichrist and the demons and the, you know, mark of the beast and all that stuff. I, I mean, it's in there. I don't want to denigrate what's there, but you just shouldn't obsess on this stuff. And people do, and it's a big mistake. Live your life, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice always. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, live your life and let your witness shine. Now, it looks like ISIS, by the way, is beheading. I read about, you know, they, uh, we talk about the souls who were beheaded for their witness for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Suddenly comes along this hideous monstrosity called ISIS, and they're beheading people. But where do they get it? It comes right out of the Koran. And it's happening. Those who refuse to d d deny the Lord uh, and, and uh, uh, they say, you, you will renounce Christianity or we're going to cut your head off. And they say, no, we're going to stand for Jesus. Just like in the Bible, it's happening. Okay, what else? Okay. Joshua says, I hear that the Islamic militants are stockpiling explosives. How does this relate to Christians and Armageddon? Well, it, it doesn't necessarily. I mean, uh, listen, there are dangers in the world, folks, and the biggest thing we've got to do is get our eyes on Jesus and keep them there. Uh, he will take care of his people. He knows how to make a difference between those who love him and those who don't. Uh, but uh, ISIS is, what we need is somebody running this country who will grab hold of the tremendous levers of power we have available to us and move f forcefully to crush ISIS. We can wipe out ISIS in about a couple of weeks with the power of the United States. All we've got to do is just turn it loose. But uh, we, we're fighting a, a uh, uh, restricted type of aerial combat and all that. It's not working. It's working in measure, but not like we should. We can destroy ISIS. So don't spend your time worrying about ISIS. Spend your time being concerned about serving Jesus Christ.